प्रदाम लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूयो भूयो नमाम्यहम रामाय रामचंद्राय राम भद्राय वेदसे रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पतय नम सो आफ्टर ऑफरिंग अवर रेस्पेक्ट टू द लॉर्ड श्री रामचंद्र लेट एस बिगिन द स्टडी ऑफ द रामायण इन अवर लास्ट डिस्कोर्स इन जुलाई विद अगस्ट एंड सेप्टेम्बर फॉर सम रीजन we couldn't study because there were many other programs so this is again after the two months so we will start uh, reading the ramayana and now it was uh, that the the surponaka the sister of ravana and she was insulted in the hand of lakshmana so the great king the ravana wanted to take revenge and moreover the ravana's other brothers and many of the friends his subjects they were the rakshasas they were punished and killed in the hands of sri rama so ravana planned to uh, take the revenge but instead of directly fighting like a hero what he planned that he should abduct the wife of sri rama and obviously that will make sri rama very weak of course it is true so when a person is fighting alone that is a different situation but when his family is involved the so automatically he becomes weak thinking about the family the ravana he planned and he was he was having some of the uh, associates those who could change their form so we know that the he was ch- ch- changed he asked the uh, one of his associates to uh, mariche to transform him as a golden deer the sheeta was very fond of deers and particularly golden deers and decorated with other jewelries also and uh, the jewel the sh- it went in front of the sita and sita of seeing that beautiful deer got attracted and started praying to sri rama please catch that for me now sri rama knew it that it is not possible as a golden deer but anyway as things goes it is all predestined ravana is supposed to be killed and all these things goes in this way as because we know the story the whole story the at the beginning and the end we can say look at it how it things goes but at that very moment contemporary uh, time so we think oh what what is happening like all predestined whatever the ravana asks the mariche to go and attract the attention of the mother sita and he did it and because of her request sri rama chased that deer asking lakshmana to guard the sita so this is the story but we know some of the scholars they say it may not be so because as we all discussed in our previous uh, the reading time uh, we have already discussed the different type of views so it is not possible but anyway rama went and he killed that deer uh, which was actually a rakshasa a mariche and that mariche Uh, copying the voice of sri ramachandra 
uh, he was calling for uh, Lakshmana. Oh, Lakshmana, please come save me like that. Hearing that voice, Mother Sita again made a great mistake. And she knew that it is not possible for anyone to punish or to kill Sri Ramachandra. But even then, as the affection, the love and the attachment, it goes, she started pursuing Sri Lakshmana to go and help Sri Rama. And we know that the Lakshmana, as the Rama said, you should not leave. You should be here to protect the Sita. And uh, he was determined to do that. But as because the Sita was persistently, constantly going on telling him to go, he went. In the meantime, the, the Rakshasa king, Ravana came and dressing as a saint, as a monk, and abducted the Sita. Now, two, three things we try to understand over here. The one is, when some problem comes, one should not be agitated, should be calm, and should judge. Then only it is possible to understand what is happening. Mother Sita, her reaction, it compelled the Lakshmana to go away, leaving her alone. Otherwise, Lakshmana could protect her. Second, the Rama, though he went over there, he could also send some way the message that I'm all right. He didn't do that. So all, all these things together, that whole thing took in a form that the, uh, the Ravana came. Ravana came not in his own form. He came in the form, in the disguise of a monk, wearing the, the dress in such a way as a holy person. Now, holy people, holy persons, particularly those dresses, whole society, the human society, believed them. The Ravana's incident, dressing like the holy people, and committing heinous work, one should not do. So the faith in the holy people uh, will go because the people will start doubting to whether they are holy people or not. So that is the reason we can understand even at the time of Sri Ramachandra, it was just the second, the first is the Satya Yuga, second, the Trita Yuga. And in Trita Yuga also, they were trying to use the holy dress to do some bad work. So one must be very, very careful about this type of people. Though they are wearing the dresses and, and pretending that they are holy people, but actually they are doing some bad work, so one should be very careful about these people. So this is what happened to Sita. Sita was carried by the Anumana. Now, these two brothers meeting each other uh, and the Rama was wondering why Lakshmana has left the Sita alone and came over there. And Lakshmana narrated, he told that uh, the Sita was persistent, so I had to come. Immediately, Rama felt that something wrong has happened. And both the brothers very quickly came back to the cottage where they lived and found nowhere. The Sita was not there. Then they went to the nearby pond, the nearby places where Sita used to go to collect the faggots or the flowers or the water. All those places because they used to live over there. They all traveled to all these places and trying to find out whether Sita was there or not, but she was nowhere. Rama started uh, thinking that what has happened to her and started worrying about her. The Rama's behavior here, not only here, all through we will find, as because the Supreme Lord, he has come down in the form of Sri Ramachandra to show us the righteous path, 
but as because he took the human form he was behaving like a human and this is perfect otherwise <clears throat> the people would have said oh this is all god's work we cannot realize god we cannot follow the path that the rama followed because he was the supreme lord it was possible for him no that people should seeing the life of sri rama what we are learning that that is called the teachings of sri rama he is not telling anything but his life is teaching us everything both the brothers they were searching and in the beginning while they were proceeding they met that our the jatayu so we already know jatayu so we know that jatayu he was the friend of rama's father and uh, jatayu told them that he will be there to protect the sita and uh, he really did <coughs> now the question is is jatayu a bird but the present scholars they say no he was not a bird they were the bihanga jati jati means the clan a bihanga means the bird they used to dress themselves with the feathers of the birds even here <coughs> the native americans we can see that all their headgears they always used to have the the feathers of the birds and like that in that time in the jungle there were people they were huge in physically they were very powerful but they used to love the birds and they used to love to dress themselves as birds so that is called bihanga that is the comment of the some of the scholars he was not a bird in that way but he was a human being and he was the leader of that particular race that uh, the group that is called bihanga jati and here he gave the information to sri rama very clearly that it was ravana ravana was the brother of kubera and his father was so and so that he knew all about the abductor this is the first hand information about the abduction of sita the rama and lakshmana got from this particular jatayu the jatayu was wounded they he fought with the ravana but the ravana was having some magical power so he made the whole area covered with the uh, the one type of gas we can say or the foam something like that jata you couldn't see properly and <clears throat> taking the advantage of that we in the modern warfare also we are, we see that they throw that type of bomb that makes a huge gash and then people feel uh, the weak and they'll be coughing at that time the enemies will charge them the same thing ravana also did and something like that <clears throat> it was all covered the smoke was so thick the the ravana created the smoke then jatayu is telling that it is a magical power maybe that some type of the uh, bombs were there that uh, made that smoke and that's in that jatayu could not fight with him so rather he injured jatayu very fatal way and jatayu was almost on the verge of death before that he gave all the information to rama and lakshmana and then he told he has gone through this way uh, you can follow this path so this is a very important information now here we find that there are different type of groups used to live in the forest and jatayu though in the book they say that he was a great bard but no he was a human being only afterwards we will be meeting the hanumana and the swami vivekananda himself said no they were not the monkeys that we see in the uh, in the nowadays uh, all this the monkeys the animals they were not animals 
They used to dress like that. That was the custom of the tribals. And they, this Jatayu, the great Jatayu, the powerful Jatayu, the dedicated Jatayu, he passed away, died over there. Rama embraced him, blessed him, and this person, he left his body. And before leaving, as because he was seeing the God in human form, he was liberated. As it is said, just before death, if we think of God, we will go to God. And whatever we will think before death, we will, next birth, we will be there. So this Jatayu was very lucky. He saw that. Now, we also know that the stories of Kabanda, these are all in details we have already discussed. This Kabanda, he was a, a soul that was cursed by the Rishis. He was a very good looking person. He was having good qualities also, but had a very peculiar habit of creating problem for the Rishis. The Rishis were a quiet type of people. They are meditating. And he used to come and make a sound of the, so that the Rishi who was meditating was disturbed. And it was a fun for him. So then the Rishis got angry because constantly he is disturbing their practices. They cursed him. And he became a very peculiar form uh, Rakshasa. The Rakshasa, they say it because it is, it is not a human form, it is not a divine form. The Rakshasa. And he was not having the head on his shoulder, rather it was on his belly and a long hand like that he used to leave. Now when these two brothers approached, they, he tried to fight with them and Rama and Lakshmana cut his hands because that, those hands, the long hands, they were powerful. With that only he used to fight. When they chopped those off, then he said, can you please burn me? The, because I am suffering so much. Please burn me over here, so I like to die. The When they were doing that, then he disclosed that I was not a, a Rakshasa, but because of this, 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 all this information we got. Then that person, this Kabanda, gave a very good information. He said, see, in the political way, you must treat it. And what is that? These people, to capture or to get something, and for that they apply six type of methods. And he gave those six political means to attain the objects. First is Sandhi. See, here these are the very important parts of the Ramayana. Through the story, suddenly they are giving the very good advices. Those who are in politics, the kings and the administrators, they will get the benefit by reading the Ramayana. And in the politics, you have to achieve something. And how you will achieve? <clears throat> there are six different steps are there you can apply. The suppose if the object can be achieved through peace, though unnecessary why you should fight, why you should declare war. If you can achieve that through peace, the what you should do? Sandhi. Here the advice is you should go and develop the, uh, the friendship with the enemy and have some type of relation that's called Sandhi and you will get that, you will achieve that. Suppose it is not, then it is Bidraha. If the object cannot be achieved, uh, then it is the war, the Bidraha. You have to be rebelled and you have to go against it and you have to fight. The, you have to declare the war to achieve that. Sometimes something through peacefully, sometimes violently. Then say yan. Yan means the military expedition. The just second one was the war. It may be that the full-scale military expedition and not full-scale military expedition, but a little the war. 
Now, many of us, we know that uh, it's called border clashes, particularly countries like India and Pakistan, they constantly they are having the border clashes. And this is not the war. This is not the full-fledged military expedition. But when the war is declared completely, full-fledged military expedition, and that is completely different, and one should be ready for that. To achieve, this is the third. Fourth, it says asana. That means waiting, waiting, and waiting. That's called halting. Asana means sit. Now, you should sit. The, he is teaching Sri Ramachandra how you should achieve. What are the, the goal, the, what they are going to achieve? Rescue the mother Sita. And for that, what they should do? Like a perfect politician, shrewd politician, and they should first try to understand who is the enemy. Suppose we go, go and talk with him, pursue him, and make a treaty, and get back the mother Sita, then why should you fight? If not, then... You can uh, fight with him and then conquer. So, not as a war, declared war. Third, a complete military expedition. The, both the sides, they will uh, go and fight completely. That is third. Fourth, go and sit. Don't fight. And completely cover them in such a way that they are, the supply will be closed. And slowly, slowly, they will be weak. And months together, if the huge army is sitting at the door, the naturally the moral uh, the capacity will break and they will come to you. And fourth is Dvaiti Bhava. Dvaiti Bhava is dividing the enemy camp. Sri Ramchandra applied all this. When we will go into the details of the Ramayana, when the, they, he declared the fight, before that he practiced all this. And who taught him that? Reminded. Rama learned it. He was a, uh, the prince, obviously, all this kingly quality. What is the kingly qualities? These are all. They learn it. Otherwise, they won't be able to lead the whole country. It's not ordinary type of education. It's a very special type of education. The rulers should know how they should become successful. Now, they have to be successful, achieve something. And this fifth one is Dvaiti Bhava. You must have to develop the division in your enemy's camp. The, those who know, they will understand how this Rama divided the Ravana's brother, Bibhishana, that he came to Rama, Rama's camp and he was a great source of information. He used to give all the information, secret information of Ravana's weaknesses. That's why it was very easy for Rama to conquer. But all those details are there afterwards in the main body of the Ramayana. Then finally, it is Samo Astrayaha, seeking protection from each other. Now the sixth one, now here, that Rakshasa, who was actually, who became Rakshasa because of the curses, the Kabandha, the Kabandha told Rama, you apply, right this moment, he apply the sixth one. What is the sixth one? Sixth one is Sama Astraya. But Sama Astraya? Now you are afflicted now this moment. Because you have lost your wife, someone has abducted your wife, and you are angry, but you are not in a position to go and fight all alone. Ravana planned it. Ravana knew that one-to-one -one fight, he won't be able to fight with the Sri Rama. So he got all this information. The one person who could kill the whole the Rakshasa clan in one place we have already studied. So he, all this information he got, then he decided, I am not going to challenge him all alone. Rather, I will do something for which the he will come to my door. 
and I will play the game in my own field. So he abducted the Sita. Though it was cowardly, he should not have done that. As a hero, they should not take this, uh, the help of the women or the children. So anyway, that is the reason all through the history they criticized the Ravana, though he was a great knowledgeable person and heroic person. Here the Kabandha is asking Sri Rama that you better apply the sixth one. What is the sixth one? Sama Astraya. In the Sama Astraya, you better go and find out another person who is also like you afflicted. But he is a resourceful person. And if you develop friendship with him, make a treaty with him, he will understand your pain and he will help you. Then it will be easy for you because you are in exile. You cannot go and take the help of your own, the soldiers in Ayodhya. You are not supposed to go back. Then where do you will get the help? You need the warriors who will fight for you. So this is the advice of the Kavanda. Rama listened to it and remembered it. And this Rakshasa Kavanda uh, asked him, you better go to one place. And he gave all details uh, that you should follow this path. And there you will find a Pampa lake, the beautiful lake, crystal water. And all around you will find the different type of animals, birds are there. And a lot of fishes are there. Lakshmana can kill some animals for you and catch some fishes for you. Eat that so that your body will be strong. If you are going on crying all the time, and, and, and then you will become weak physically. But you are, this is a challenge that you are going to meet. You should be physically and mentally strong. So look at it. This Kavanda, whom Sri Ramchandra killed, he is giving all advices. Why? Because the Rishis, those who cursed him, they said, if the Rama killed you and burned your body, you will get back your old self. And that is the reason he was helping Rama actually freed him from that cards. And he became very happy and he was guiding him and he was guiding him very properly. So Rama became successful in the war, in the Ramayana, he is the great hero. But so many people helped him. And that is the reason we have to develop friendship with many different people. We do not know who will be able to help me and when. So these are the policies. The Rama listened to him, all the six steps, Sandhi, Vidraha, then Yan, Asan, Daidi Bhava, Sama Asraya. And about the Sama Asraya, he guided, you go to the Pampa Lake. You follow this path, you will reach to the Pampa Lake. And how you will know that you have reached the Pampa Lake? That there are many, many lakes that there, water bodies are there. How you will understand that you have reached the particular place, the Pampa? Because there is no one to tell you. So he told that the lake is full of different type of fishes and the water is crystal clear. And when you drink that water, you will find a beautiful smell in it. All around the trees are fruit bearing trees and also very easily available the animals, so you can uh, that eat that uh, the fruits and the animal flesh and the fishes, and Lakshmana can help you. From there, you can see Rishyamukha Hill. And if you stand over there, you can see the Rishyamukha Hill. You better go over there. Then Kavanda offering this, and he said, now, I should say goodbye to you and please bless me so that I can go back to my own abode. Rama blessed him. He left uh, leaving this mortal coil and Rama and Lakshmana 
you started towards the Pompa Lake. Kabanda also mentioned that there you will find a, a hermitage and the name of the hermitage is Matanga. This Matanga hermitage when you reach over there you will find that there are powerful the animals are there the tigers and are the powerful the elephants but at the same time the almost whole area is covered with the rishis they practice austerity particularly when they become old they come to that place and they practice austerity you better go to that place first and after reaching over there taking some rest then you proceed towards the Rishyamukh Parvat. When you are reading or listening, as if the clear picture it comes, and we can easily go over there. Rama and Lakshmana, they walked, walked and walked, reached to that place, and the Pampa Hills, they took rest. They also ate the fish and all that, and became the healthy and refreshed with that. Then there is to that particular place called uh, the Matanga. And there Sri Rama and Lakshmana, when they were following the uh, route narrated by the, the Kabanda, on the way they met a unique personality about whom we all know. That is Shabari. The Shabara was a group of people those who used to uh, uh, the sell the meat. Shabara was the hunters, basically. So, according to the uh, different social status, they were at the last stage, last uh, status. But their one of the daughters, the sh her name became Shabari because maybe she was having some other name, as because the daughter of the Shabara. So they started calling her Shabari. And what she used to do when she was very young, maybe hardly 10, 12, like that, she came to that place and she started liking to serve the Rishis who used to come over there at the fag end of their life. Because the Matanga Muni, if there's a now as we know, if someone goes to Kashi and die over there, Immediately he will get the liberation. That is the faith. And Rishis used to come to the Matanga, uh, that uh, place, the place of the Matanga Rishi. At the end of their life, they were also Rishis, but they used to come over there just to practice the severe austerity and used to leave their mortal body. They used to die over there. Shavari used to serve these aged elderly rishis and they were very fond of this girl and she used to bring water for them fire and, and different type of services collecting fruits food and all medicine everything she used to do and she used to sit near them and used to listen how they are discussing the scripture and that is also very important the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, to develop the spiritual life, you have to go to Sadhu Sangha, have the Sadhu Sangha. You have to go to a Sadhu and you have to have the Sadhu Sangha, the company of the holy people. What the holy people they discuss? They always discuss positive way, the, what is life and how the things are, how we can slowly develop our mind, the level of the mind, the mind is constantly goes down. We like to criticize others. We like to find fault with others. We like to discuss some of the things, very mundane things. And that way we spend our time. But in a holy company, they will be discussing about the scriptures. They will be discussing about the God. And naturally, the mind will elevate from the lower level. This young lady... From very young age, she was there, and somehow, the someone, the some of the rishis told her, "Stay here, serve the rishis, and wait for Sri Ramachandra." 
when Sri Ramachandra will come, serve him and get his blessings, then you will go to heaven. So she took it very seriously and all through the life, that's called the spiritual practice. There's a great patience. One or two days or one month or two months cannot help. There's sometimes we become impatient and uh, we go from one ashrama to another ashrama, one guru to another guru. We like to change, but no, that won't help. Then you have got some instructions from your guru. You go on practicing that. And ultimately, you will surely get the benefit, the blessings. So, Shravari decided, though she was born in a low family, but she decided that she should develop the spirituality and one day should get rid of all these bondages and get the liberation. Friends, here also you should notice, we should notice that the religion is not for only a particular people. Those who are educated, those who are good born people in the Brahmanas or rich people, for them only God? No. God realization can be by anyone. Whether male, female, Brahmin, or Shudras, it doesn't matter at all. The God realization completely different. The first is my effort to realize God, my strong desire to realize God, that should be there. Second, constant practice it without break. And thirdly, the concept of my God, what I am going to get of that. So if it is there, then the God realization is for sure, for anyone. The Shabari was serving a right, we can imagine, they never mentioned in the book the how old she was, but she was a very young lady. And in those days, maybe hardly 12, 15 years old young lady, she started practicing and practicing to God realization and so that she can go to heaven and live in the company of the God. But the Rishis told that one day the God will come in the form of Sri Ramachandra. And when he comes, do not make any mistake. Serve him so that he bless you. And this was the time Shabari became very old. She was more than 60 or 70 years old lady. And every day she used to clean the path, clean the, all those places, so that the, when the God in the form of Sri Rama will come, she should be ready. She used to collect the fruits every day, fresh fruits and water, so that whenever the God will come, and I can offer it, and I can serve him. The flower, the fruits, and the cleanliness, all these things regularly she used to do along with serving the elderly Swamis. The day came. Sri Rama and Lakshmana, when they were approaching, when they were going to Matanga, the Rishi's the cottage, and there they found on the way a very humble cottage because she used to live separately, not, not with the other monks, the other holy people. She used to live separately. And there, on the way, these two brothers, Rama and Lakshmana, they found very humble cottage, but very neat and clean. When they approached, that elderly lady, Shabari, she was sitting, and like every day, she was going on praying and waiting for the God to come. And today, her, the whole life's the prayer, answered, she saw Sri Ramachandra. Immediately she recognized, because the Rishis perhaps gave all the description, that Rama came, the big lotus eyes, the beautiful Rama and his brother Lakshmana. So when they came, Shabari went, welcomed them, washed their feet and asked them to sit uh, uh, in his uh, uh, humble cottage offered them food, and they had a beautiful conversation. After talking to Shabari, 
Sri Rama said that you are so sweet talking person that when I am not quoting the Sanskrit but when the Rama is mentioning that means when we are talking with a person someone who has come to visit you if we know how to talk and that gives the solace the joy to that person and automatically from his mind also come all the blessings and good wishes the words that we say that we use are so powerful so the devotee should be careful when they are talking with the holy people the when they are talking with their guru so here we find the shavari she mastered that and when she was talking not that she was elderly and rama lakshmana was young so she was uh, oh a young boy where from you are coming not like that she knew that though young in body but sri rama he was that that vishnu that supreme god to with great respect but at the same time with great love because she used to worship the constantly she was addressing and after that we won't go into that conversation rama became very very happy and blessed her and said now wherever you like to go that means uh, in the heaven or where, wherever you can go after serving them shavari said now i should give up my body now here sometimes the people they doubt how it is that the when the rama is proceeding we find the many of the places the holy people and other type of people who are meeting sri rama and then they are leaving their body like the kabanda lived like the uh, other uh, our jatayu and before that some of the rishis and uh, uh, then now the shavari how it is in the yoga there is a system you can completely control your breathing and can concentrate your mind on the center of mm. your head and then you can break that particular portion and your prana vayu oh ek eta dekho 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 shikire sho oh ho এখানে এসে ওটা অ্যাকচুয়ালি গেছে সাডেনলি আই সো দ্যাট সাম অ্যাডভার্টাইজমেন্ট অন দ্য স্ক্রিন তো আই এম সরি দ্যাট দ্যাটস ইন্টারাপশন but anyway the the shabari uh, left her body and with that uh, that uh, practicing and that uh, yoga and she left her body before sri rama and then rama told the lakshmana let us go to our particular goal the rishyamukha parvata because the kavanda said you should go to the rishyamukha and on the way you may but in kavanda never mentioned about shabari but he mentioned about the matanga rishi's ashrama and uh, he, he mentioned about the pampa the lake and then finally he said your destination should be that hill then they started going towards that particular hill and when they finally they t- the uh, they started over there the rishyamukha parvata rama saw from there the rishyamukha parvata was visible so told lakshmana let us now go to that place but seeing on the way seeing the beautiful scenery in that place rama be, was overwhelmed he started remembering all the the of the um, the remembrance of the memories of the shita uh, crowded his mind so he started though sri rama so again and again the great poet he is depicting sri rama as a human being though he was god but at the same time this was the human way he was behaving and in the human mind 
after being separated from the beloved one, the mind is all the time uh, thinking about the beloved one. And when he saw the beautiful flowers, the water, and all around, all that unique scene and other things, he started remembering the Sita. And almost like crying, he was going on lamenting. There's a big description in the whole, in the Ramayana, that he is going to the trees, he is going to the, uh, the water, and constantly as if talking with the Sita, the, uh, he was doing that. Then finally, the Lakshmana, he it said, the brother Lakshmana, with humility, but with firmness, he said, Oh brother, please restrain yourself. Now we have to collect information about Ravana, the abductor. We have to develop contact with the powerful kings and warriors. And we have to make perfect plan to attack and rescue the mother Sita. So this is again the advice that the Lakshmana, the brother, he was giving. And he was very correct. Rama, O oh Lord, you are the hero. This despondency do not befit you. We shall surely kill that demon and rescue Mother Sita. Lakshmana told. Rama, he thought, yes, now it is all right. Now I should control myself. The mixture of divinity and the humanity. Mixture of a human weaknesses at the same time the divine, uh, the divine wisdom. That is the character of Sri Rama, the unique character of Sri Ramachandra. The complete knowledge is there. Before all these things, he got the wonderful teaching from the family guru, Guru Vashishta. Then uh, I, I, I am giving the classes every Sunday over here. Many of you must be hearing that and you have seen that it is in the YouTube. The Yoga Vashishta, the highest Vedanta. That was taught and Sri Ramchandra learned. And after all these things, then he, he, he went and he got married and all these things happened. But that Vedantic knowledge was present in him. So obviously, the, he knew all these things. But at the same time, he was behaving like the human being. We see the same thing in the life of Bhagavan. Sri Ramakrishna, also in the life of Sri Krishna. This is the beauty. When the avatar comes in the form of human, they behave like human so that we can believe them. We can feel that it's like us, the one of us. So we can listen to him, follow to him. Otherwise, suddenly, if it is a completely the divine thing, so we think, oh, this is only for the gods, not for us. It is not possible for human being. So we give up. That is the reason the avatars, the they, though they are gods, but at the same time, they be, behave so wonderfully as a human being that we become very close to them. Sri Rama, he was lamenting. And then afterwards, when the Lakshmana told, and he became, so, uh, okay, now, I, I uh, you are correct. Uh, let me uh, behave properly. So he, as if listening to the advice of the Lakshmana, he started controlling himself. When they were near to that hill, Rishya Mukha, Rishya Mukha, that hill, Parbata, the, the, there Sugriva was hiding. The Shugriva, his brother Bali, banished him and also threatened to kill him. The Shugriva was hiding into that particular place because, again, there was a saying that Bali was very powerful, but he won't be able to go to that particular place because the Rishi Rishma, Rishamukha cursed Bali. And what is this karsas? Is a, this is a type of the power of mantra. 
the rishis they developed that power and they could use that and in those days it was they used to use it and he said that you cannot come and disturb me the rishi mukha said the moment you will come to this particular place into my ashrama you will die so bali was restrained and he knew that he should not go and disturb the rishi so hanuman knew it so when it was that the two brothers uh, they fought and of course it was completely the mistake of the bali the elder brother many of you know that story the bali chased a demon and he was a very strong person bali he fought against ravana also and he defeated ravana so we can understand the person who can defeat the ravana how powerful he was bali he was the from the clan of the hanumana hanumana again in our days we always make the mistake we think that the animals that live in the forest on the trees this is the same hanumana no they were not they the human being there is a tribal they were clan and these people they used to wear the dress like the hanumanas and that's why they like to tell them about uh, as hanumana like the pakshi clan we have seen the bird clan jatayu here also the same hanumanas and we will be introduced afterwards there was another clan who is to dress like the bears so that was there so we have to understand this and it will become very easy how the monkeys can uh, do that no it is not this hanumana these two brothers now he was very powerful and he had a, a, uh, picked up a fight with one person chased him who entered inside a cave he was also very powerful now this bali told i am going to kill him and then i will come out but you should see to over here he asked his brother the sugriva and wait for me to come out and he asked uh, the sugriva to close that the entry path of the uh, of the particular place so he entered into uh, that channel and started fighting and the uh, sugriva was sitting outside the cave so and, and he was listening the sound and slowly slowly it was mixed up both of them they were shouting whose voice is he couldn't recognize then after some time he found that the flow of blood is coming out and he was very much afraid the what happened to my brother he shouted he called but there was no answer then naturally he became a uh, very afraid and without leaving without removing the stone that was covering the the passage he left and he went back to his own place and took up the reign he became the king thinking the brother has been killed over there died over there now it was opposite now bali killed that person and then bali tried to come out but the it was all closed he called his brother but brother mistook thinking that the bali has been killed and he wanted that the rakshasa should not come out so he didn't remove that particular stone that was covering that the channel and then bali misunderstood he thought the brother wanted me to die over here so somehow he was a strong person he removed that he came and in the meantime many months and years passed when the bali reached back and he found that his brother as a king sitting over there and he became very angry and he challenged him and in the duel the both the brothers in those days that was the system and the, if you anyone is challenging you to fight you have to fight and naturally the sugriva was weaker than the bali sugriva was very powerful but comparing with bali he was nothing so bali then defeated him and told that i am going to kill you some day now at moment i banish you 
don't be uh, in my country. So that was the background story. And the Sugriva, and with some of his trusted friends, he was hiding in the Rishyamukha. Among those were Hanumana. Hanumana was a very pious person, though very powerful, but he was pious and apparently very calm and quiet. He supported the Sugriva. When all others, out of fear of the Bali, they left the Sugriva, company of the Sugriva, that uh, Hanumana, he told, no, Bali is correct. He, he, he made a mistake, but he could not understand. So it was not his fault, though. But anyway, they were leaving. When the Rama and Lakshmana, they were approaching, they found that the some of their, uh, the, the, those secretly they saw, and they reported to the Sugriva. Sugriva himself came, along with other ministers, counselors, and they secretly saw that Rama and Lakshmana coming towards them. And Bali broke down. He said, oh, my brother, uh, Bali, sorry, Sugriva broke down. And he said to his companions, oh, my brother has hired these mercenaries. They look like the gods. Maybe that the demigods, my brother Bali has hired them and sent them to kill me. Oh, I am done. I cannot save myself from them. And Anumana said, why? Well, look. Then he gave, I will quote this particular, uh, the sloka. is in the Kiskinda Kanda. It's the Kanda means the uh, one uh, a different type of the whole Ramayana was divided in Kanda, in chapters. The Kiskinda Kanda, in the 2 by 20, this verse is there. Dirgo Bahu, Vishalakshu, Sharacha Osi Dharino, Kastanasya Bayam Drishtva, Hetu Sura Sutu Pamo. Sura, Sura means the God. This is a godly. This is like that the demi gods. They are having the very strong, long hands. Dirgo Bahu. Bishalaksha, look at their eyes, the big, big eyes, and so beautiful, but at the same time, and when they are angry, it will be dangerous to look at that. Shara, Shara means they are having the bow and arrow. Cha and Asi, Asi means the sword. So that means both type of, they can, from the distance they can fight, and with the very close also, they can use their swords to fight. Dharino, they are having these two type of weapons. Who will not be afraid of this? Kastyanasya bhayam, drishtva, seeing them, who will not be afraid? Heto sura suto upamo. Look at them. Then Anumana said, well, I like to volunteer and I like to go down and meet them and get details information about them. You better hide over here. The Hanumana, here in the Ramayana, it mentioned, he changed his dress and put on the dress of a Brahmin. Again, the Brahmin, they were the researchers and obviously in the society, they were highly respected. And he put on the dress of a Brahmin so that from distance there will be no doubt that the holy person is coming, a good man. So now the first time Hanumana is going to meet Sri Rama. We end over here and in the next month we will continue from here. The Hanumana and Rama and the Ramayana begins. Thank you friends and uh, let us say Shanti three times and we conclude. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tatsat